The Star Wars universe is connected in many ways. Explore the deeper connections hidden in Rogue One. May the Force be with us. This droid is a practical puppet, operated by the same team that brought BB-8 to life in Episode 7, The Force Awakens. The turbo tank designed by Joe Johnston is one of the rare Star Wars vehicles with wheels. It was first used by the clone army in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Congratulations, you are being rescued. K2SO was originally designed to be a black protocol droid. Are you talking about me? The first appearance of a TIE Reaper, designed by co-production designer Doug Chang. For the beginning of the film, he wanted it everyone to be genuinely scared. We wanted something to come up with something more menacing. Garrett saw some paintings of uh, Ralph McCord where he stylized the stormtroopers and made them very tall and very elegant. And then we thought, okay, well, this could become our SEAL Team 6 version of, of the stormtroopers. I love those challenges where you're trying to create something new, but then it has to fit within the universe of Star Wars. So we just took a stormtrooper, thinned it up, painted it black to see if it would work. And it was actually really cool. Jim, if you're listening, my beloved, so much of my life has been wasted. He plays a very important part in her arc. He is a man who is a scientist. I think if you have an equivalent, it would be Oppenheimer, a man who invents something extremely powerful that can save the human species, but at the same time can do the exact opposite as well. It's a heartbreaking idea of the father saying, I've been forced to do this terrible thing, and I can't do anything else. But now it falls to you, my only daughter, my only child, to put this right. It must be destroyed. I know. We will. So for that reason, I thought it was a beautiful character by itself, and then it was slung into a Star Wars universe, so who can ask for anything else? All right, so um, just pick up that lovely grater. I don't know if you want to <laughs> move over that way a little bit. So your head's away from the grater. Mads is absolutely tremendous. He's a father himself and actually has so many paternal qualities. It was so playful working with him. Every time I would see him, I would just shout, dad which i think was a little bit disconcerting but it was the it was the fact that he he was on jin's side he's truly in her camp director krennic lord vader as soon as you put him in a scene that's all you want to see it's like really hard to come back from that you have to be really careful how you use him, because if you bring him in too early in the film, you sort of just want Vader for the rest of the movie. The Rebel flagship is disabled, my lord, but has received transmissions from the surface. Prepare a boarding party. Suddenly your brain is exploding with not only our film, but the other film, which is about to come to life. <laughs> the door that Darth Vader comes through in A New Hope, I got to film, you know, as, as a fan. That was an incredible experience. Launch! I can describe it in one word. Goosebumps. I loved Riz Ahmed in Nightcrawler. And as we were looking for a character for Bodhi Rook, I made sure to throw his name in the hat. He did a few auditions for us. He kept cranking out different versions of Bodhi. The security checkpoint is still manned. You said the alarm would clear them out. Well, it should have. They shouldn't. If you would. Uh, can you just bluff your way through? Riz 
filmed himself. He was in New York. Like, he did a little thing of, like, this is how Bodhi could be. Ha! What did I tell you? And then, obviously, then I started kind of... The obsession starts where you start sending, like, doing 50,000 takes of something because you left your own devices. Uh, can you not just bluff your way through? What? You cannot be serious. Well, yeah, I mean, you're a spy. Do you a spy thing? Hmm? And then he was like, great, we've got what we need. But I didn't stop there. I just carried on recording more takes and just emailing him. I was like, screw it, I've got his email address now. You're a spy, do you spy think? He could be like this, or he could be like this, or he could be like this. And it was like, okay, anyway, you've got, you've got the part and then got another, like, eight clips saying, all this, all this, all this, all this, all this. Okay, <laughs> what did I tell you? What did I tell you? I was like, okay, I've kind of totally, totally screwed this up now. I'm like spamming the director. Saw Guerrera was a character that was in Clone Wars. Saw is a long-standing Star Wars character who's inhabited the periphery of Star Wars storytelling for a while. He was an idea that came from George. Because we came into Lucasfilm and found that George had already left some ideas behind, and we thought, well, God, what else could we do? It was Kiri's idea, actually, that it be Saw Guerrera, and that would further legitimize the story inside the stories that had already been told. Saw Guerrera came to the rebellion early. He was an activist. He's frustrated. The Republic is in disarray and chaos. The Rebel Alliance hasn't really come together in the way that he thought it would. We see him as a broken person, and you realize this is what a lifetime of fighting the Empire could turn you into. I love the chaos. I love it. Jen, no! So the fitness, nothing compared to doing Rogue One. Every day there's some kind of assault course obstacle that we're given. There was a lot of rehearsal, a lot of preparation. We're trying to create a situation where being thrown off balance can produce something spontaneous to make that feel as real as possible, to make it feel like, you, you know, that your heart's beating and you're actually in this situation. It's quite late in the day. There's been a lot of running around. <laughs> Just going to do some stretches. Action. It's been the most physical exercise I've ever done in my entire life. One of the, the biggest physical differences between Alan and K2 is that K2 is about a foot uh, 14 inches taller than, than Alan. So you want the eye line to be in the right place. So most of the time, Alan is wearing these really wonderfully made stilts. And that puts his you know, knees at the right place, puts his shoulder at the right place, puts his head in the right place. And it always worked better and it transferred better if there was more of a personality in his movement. K2 walks down a hallway and is passed by another K2 model that's in the Empire and hasn't been freed by a reprogram like K2 was. He's like a soldier and he's walking very perfectly and very straight and upright. And then K2 is kind of sort of loping along a little bit. I think that's what makes K2 a little bit more accessible and gosh, I'm gonna say it lovable. There are times when what Alan needs to do are just a little too awkward or dangerous to do with the stilts. So in order to have his eye line at the right place, there's a backpack that's been rigged with a couple little poles and a cutout photo of K2's head. If, if there's ever a time where I have to put that thing on, oh God, no. <laughs> Here it comes. It's so awful. And then this telescoping head that comes out of the top, and it's just true, it's just a piece of, of uh, poster board with a really rudimentary K2 face. I mean, this has come from ILM. Diego said, Alan, it's amazing how little respect you have on this set right now. Because there's no way to respect this, you know? It's like if we were 
just witnessing the first science fiction film done in in elementary school. Exactly. They call it the Death Star, but they have no idea there's a way to defeat it. You need to capture the Death Star plans if there's any hope of destroying it. Careful! The time to fight is now! Light it up. I never ever thought that I'd be lucky enough to be directing a Star Wars movie. The Death Star plans are down there. We'll find a way to find them. Rebellions are built on hope. Hey, Valeria here with some movie madness. Did you know that for Return of the Jedi, Harrison Ford suggested that Han Solo sacrifice his life to save his friends, but George Lucas declined? What do you think? Would it have been a good idea? Let me know below. Also, if you haven't already done it, subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest releases. Bye.